Today, the English language is one of the most widespread languages in the world. It has been influenced by many other languages, and one that has made a lot of impact is Latin. Let's take a look at different ways in which Latin has affected the English language. In 597 AD, Augustine and about 50 monks from Rome brought Christianity to England. Along with Christianity, they also brought Latin. Sent to convert Britain by Pope Gregory, Augustine and his followers were received well. Augustine wasn't the only reason for conversion in England. Before they came, artisans and traders from Rome had also spread the religion. As a result of these two forces, the conversion of Britain was slow but peaceful. Things really started to speed up in the 10th century. King Alfred of Wessex saw the Viking attacks as punishments from God. To try to fix this, he made sure that lords provided the peasants on their land with chapels, so Christianity could reach everyone. Later, as a result of the Norman conquest, William the Conqueror began building many new churches. From there, the church was a very important part of people's lives, even if most of them weren't devout churchgoers. The buildings became schools, marketplaces, and areas of entertainment. The church also influenced people's lives whether they liked it or not because people of authority supported it in its rules. Latin was an important part of Christianity at the time. It was the language of the church. Services were in Latin, Latin was spoken in monasteries, and the Bible was written in Latin. The first literate Anglo-Saxons were educated by the Catholic Church. Um, to be literate during this time in England essentially meant being fluent in Latin. So Latin was primarily used by church officials and wealthy, educated people. Roughly 400 Latin words that came into Old English from the conversion to Christianity can be found in our language today. The Italian Renaissance was a period of new design and ideas. Renaissance means rebirth and refers to the revival of classical Greek and Roman culture. The traditional view of the Renaissance was that it emerged abruptly as a result of the fall of Constantinople in 1453, when Greek scholars were drove to Italy and they passed on the classical culture. However, this explanation is overly simplistic. There was a revived interest in classical culture and several movements were developing. One emerging movement was secularism, which was a major shift in ideology. People began to live their lives for things other than the afterlife. The change of focus was reflected in art where images began to represent accurate scenery as opposed to solely the glory of God. Another movement was humanism, which was a shift in focus from God in heaven to humans in this world. Another movement was individualism, which embodied the belief that humans are capable of great things and released innovation. An extremely important innovation which influenced the popularization of the English language was the arrival of the printing press. During the Renaissance, most texts were religious and written in Latin, and were kept in monasteries where they weren't accessible to everyone. With the invention of the printing press, old texts were preserved and new Renaissance ideas could be spread more quickly and accurately, and with less resistance from the church. Books became less expensive and literacy became more common. Printing became an industry and the printing press brought Latin texts to the literate population. In the 16th and 17th centuries, the Renaissance came to Northern Europe, including England, as more progressive ideas and wealth moved north, and there was an increased resistance to humanist ideas in Italy. During this period, the English Renaissance, commonly referred to as the Elizabethan era, occurred. Okay. Thousands of new words were brought into English, and because Latin was considered to be a language of scholarship, many of these words were borrowed from Latin, used to convey theological, scientific, or other words. By the end of this era, English was respected as a scholarly language equally as much as, or even more than, classical languages. The rebirth of classical culture in the humanist movement, as well as the importation of the printing press technology from China during the Renaissance, all contributed to the increased importance of the English language and the influence that Latin had on it.
During the previously discussed periods of rapidly growing Latin influence, many existing Latin words were incorporated directly into English. Most of the vocabulary borrowed from Latin can be distinguished into three major categories, including words for education, Christianity related, and an interesting term that arises during this time called inkhorns. When discussing Latin used in an educational setting, there are two significant uses of Latin vocabulary that many people are familiar with. One is something called binomial nomenclature. This system was developed to create universal names for each species using Latin words. Among scientists today, it is considered the professional way to identify organisms. This is similar to how Latin was used mainly for official documentation during the early development of Old English. One example of binomial nomenclature is this creature. Today, it's most commonly known as T-Rex or Tyrannosaurus rex. Tyrannosaurus rex is based off of three Latin words, Tyrannus, Saurus, and Rex, translating to Cruel Lizard King. Some people do know that T-Rex arises from Latin roots, but the term T-Rex is so ubiquitous that many times people forget that it is even Latin at all. This is a great example of how some Latin has blended so naturally in with the English language. Another example of binomial nomenclature is an organism called Angelica archangelica. Any guesses? Exactly, it's a plant. This plant was revered in Northern Europe because it was believed to have great healing powers. At the time of the spread of Christianity through the Roman Empire, it was associated with the help of archangels. Some legends even said that angels introduced this plant to humans knowing of its medical powers. Therefore, when, a, when creating a name for this plant, scientists decided to associate this plant, plant's name with angels and archangels, thus resulting in the scientific name Angelica Archangelica. From this example, we can see the flexibility and creativity of Latin word borrowing into English. Another place that we can see Latin in education is various terms regarding law. Oftentimes in law courts we can see judges casually using Latin phrases. One prominent example of Latin used in a legal setting is a commonly used phrase, habeas corpus. It literally means, you should have the body. In today's context, it means that people have the right to make an effort to be freed before they are imprisoned. This phrase is very important in civil, civil liberties today. In fact, this Latin phrase was deemed so important that it is written, written in the Magna Carta and the Constitution. Basically, Latin remains an important part of official documentation in the English language today.